everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing some double heat embossing, which is a great way to add some dimension to your embossed sentiments. So first, let's take a look at the stamps that I'll be using today. This is the Swoopy Flowers from Simon Says Stamp. I love when there is a coordinating stencil to go with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is stamp out this large floral image, and I'm using some 80 pound Nina white cardstock. I'm going to just kind of rub my hand over the stamp to kind of condition it so that I get a good impression. And I'm stamping this down in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'm gonna stamp it twice to make sure I hit all the spots, and then I'm going to flip the cardstock so I can stamp a second one, and I'm gonna do the ink blending with both of these. Now there's two reasons why I picked this stamp set today and one of them is because there's a coordinating stencil to color it in and the second reason is because I had I thought it had a very unique design to it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So the first thing I'm doing is now for your layering stencil it is just a one piece stencil. The layers are all included on there. So I lined up the first layer which is the most open area of the stencil and I masked off the rest of my card with some post-it notes. I'm going to start off with a really light purple, which is the lilac ink. And this is all, all of these purples are in a trio set. So I'm starting with that really light purple and adding that to my open areas of the stencil with a blending brush, just kind of going over it light handed. Then I'll remove my post-it notes and remove that first layer of the stencil. So this stencil is going to color in different areas of the flowers. Some of them are going to overlap. Some of them will be filling in some white space. Now my second color I'm using is orchid ink. So it's going to be a shade darker than the lilac that I used previously. Once again, just picking that up with my blending brush and adding that to the open areas of the stencil. And I am using the same blending brush for all three of these purple shades. Now I'm just moving that stencil and I'm gonna line up the third layer, which is going to be some smaller areas and it's going to fill in the rest of the flower. Now, some of these areas you maybe don't have to mask off with the post-it notes because I'm gonna die cut it out anyway, but I just feel safer just in case there happens to be part of the image peeking out that I may not have catched. So I always feel better just masking everything off around it. And post-it notes are a great way to do that because they're so inexpensive. After I finish adding this darkest shade out of the trio, we have this beautiful design and very monochromatic. I love those deep purples. Now I cleaned off my work surface and also my stencil so I don't transfer any of that purple ink onto my leaves. And now on also part on this stencil are two areas that you can, or actually there's three areas you can use. No, there's two areas that you can use to color in the leaves. This first color I'm doing is Sprout Ink. So I masked that off, added that color, and now the second layer of the leaves is going to just overlap some of those areas and add some detail. There is another piece on here. It's actually right off on the left-hand side there. That piece I did not use. I believe, I believe it's part of the flower that you can add some more detail to, but I just didn't use it. I really liked how everything turned out here. So that second color of green was Fairway Ink, also from Simon Says Stamp, and that finishes off the coloring of the flower. I really love how these colors came out and the design of this flower with that. I used the coordinating die to die cut out those flowers, and now I can work on my sentiment where I'm going to be doing some double heat embossing. So I lined this up on 80 pound white cardstock, prepped that with an anti-static powder tool, and then I'm inking this up with a Versamark ink. I'm going to stamp it down a couple times because a Versamark is a clear sticky ink. It will stay wet for a little while longer than a regular dye ink, but it can be hard to see. So I like to stamp it twice. Then I'm sprinkling on some gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, tap off my excess and then he, uh, melt that embossing powder. So I like to start from the back and then come to the front. Now, what determines if I'm going to do some double heat embossing, it depends on how warped my cardstock is from my heat tool. This wasn't too bad, so I placed it back in my Misty because I had left my stamp there. I'm prepping that again with that anti-static powder tool. Make sure you do that, and you make sure you give it time to cool off. So now I'm inking up that sentiment once again, and I'm gonna stamp right over the top of that embossed area. 
After I stamp that down, I'm going to sprinkle on some of that gilded embossing powder once again. Now sometimes and most likely what happens to me is that I still have a little bit of embossing powder sticking to my cardstock. I tapped it off, but you can see it still wants to stick down to that one area. That means I either didn't let my cardstock cool off long enough or I didn't prep it good enough. So I just like to take a small paintbrush and just kind of carefully wipe away any of that excess powder. And then I can melt that with the heat tool. And this gives just a really cool dimension to it. I'm using the coordinating die to die cut out that sentiment. And once I do, it's gonna cut it out just perfectly so there's just a little bit of white space around there. And now we have that beautiful gilded embossing powder. Sometimes you can even do triple heat embossing to give it even more dimension. I had used that thanks die and die cut it two more times from white cardstock. And I'm going to layer that together with my liquid glue and just lining that up with my tweezers. Now my original plan for the design of my card was to take those two flowers that I die cut and have them go kitty corner. This was the original thought process I had for it. So I have a piece of cardstock trimmed out and I placed in my Misty tool and I'm using the flowers and that heat embossed sentiment as a guide. And then I'm going to add this smaller sentiment underneath. I really, really love these small sentiments because it kind of looks like a typewriter type of font, which I just really love the font and how that looks on the front of the card. So after I have that lined up, I'm inking that up with a black ink once again and stamping that down. It's kind of a delicate font, so I am going to ink it up once more and stamp it down. I just don't want to push too hard and, you know, kind of squish those letters. So I want to just tap it gently. Now the panel that I stamped that on, I'm going to line the back of it with this Alt New foam tape. That's going to add a little bit of lift to the background. And I'm also adding that foam tape to my flowers. I'm really loving this Alt New tape because it's not sticking to any of my scissors. There's no goopy stuff sticking to it. And it does give a really great dimension look to my panel here. So I added my thanks with the liquid glue to the center. And then I'm adding this piece of cardstock to another piece of white cardstock that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I will look up what size this panel is actually cut to, that smaller one, because I don't remember offhand. So once I find that measurement, I will list that over on my blog. Now here, I was kind of playing with the orientation and this one where it's on the top and the bottom, it's really different for me. I don't do this type of design very often and I'm really trying to break out of my normal habits. So I went ahead and removed the backing of that foam tape and I'm going to leave it as that type of design. So I'm gonna have those florals at the top and at the bottom. Now, I thought it would be kind of fun to add these white details with my Jelly Roll pen. I'll be honest, I didn't like it. I added maybe two lines and I didn't like it, but there was nothing I could do at that point. I already had some lines on there. So I kept going with it and I'm adding it to the rest of the flowers. And then something else I thought of afterwards was in a couple areas of the flowers and the leaves, I'm going to add just kind of kind of a star or a cross, so to speak. That way it's kind of going to look like there's little sparkles on my flowers, or at least I hope it looks like I have sparkles on my flowers and leaves. And then that's going to finish up the card project for you today. So if you haven't tried double heat embossing, I highly suggest giving it a try. It is a beautiful look for the front of your cards. And I really love the design of these flowers. I definitely did not have anything like this in my stash. All of my supplies will be listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you soon.